All right, welcome to the Drew Pearson Show. This is another edition coming to you live from Henry's Tavern right here in Plano, Texas at the Shops of Legacy. What a cool place. We want to thank Henry's Tavern for hosting another edition of the Drew Pearson Show. And we got a great show lined up for you tonight. We got some special guests with us, including Will Allen, current Dallas Cowboy, number 26. He plays safety for the Dallas Cowboys, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how he became a member of the Dallas Cowboys. Also, my co-host, the entertainment guru, Paul Southen, and his sidekick, Jen Reed, have been doing some special things. Paul is going to bring you a great interview with the great Justin Timberlake. That's right. Justin Timberlake will be part of the Drew Pearson Show tonight. And also, Paul and Jen have been in the kitchen here at Henry's Tavern. Also with us tonight is our social media director, Michael Nass, and uh, he'll be taking your questions via Facebook and Twitter. If you got a great question to ask Drew Pearson or anybody here with the Drew Pearson Show, you got to file it with Michael Nass, and he'll be up here a little later and presenting those questions to me. we got a great lineup for you tonight. We want to thank our sponsors, Albertsons, Dodge City of McKinney, Lombardo's Clothier, right here in Plano, Texas, and of course, Henry's Tavern, where the Drew Pearson Show comes to you live via YouTube tonight. So let's get this party started, because the Drew Pearson Show starts right now. All right, welcome back to the Drew Pearson Show. We're coming to you live via YouTube tonight, right here at Henry's Tavern in the Shops at Legacy in Plano, Texas. Beautiful place. They got some great food here. You come watch some Monday night football. They got big screens all around the place, and they serve the best drinks in town. This is one of my favorite segments. Uh, Miss Kelly couldn't be with us tonight, so we got a replacement for her, and we got the great Will Allen. Number 26 for the Dallas Cowboys joining us. Thank you for being well here, Will. Thanks for having me. And Appreciate also, it. we got, uh, my, you know this guy. Finally moved him over to the guest host seat. <laughs> who filled in last week for him. He did an admirable job. Of course, that's the great Mark Colombo. Give him some as well. Thank you. All right, Will, you know, before we get into your history of your background uh, coming through Ohio State, going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the fourth pick uh, in the uh, 2004 draft. Yeah. Right. And uh, before we get into that, let's talk about that game yesterday against the San Diego Chargers. The Chargers was really moving that ball offensively, big chunks of yards. Did they do anything you guys didn't expect out there? Uh, no. I mean, they did everything we expected them to do. You know, um, you know, I got into a hurry-up, red ball type offense, check with me at the line. And uh, that's what teams are, are starting to do to us. You know, what, they're trying to slow our pass rush down and get us into um, – get put position themselves into optimal, optimal situations for third down. So, you know, they just executed well. Um, we, were, we were a little um, sluggish on some technique. And, um, you, know, you know, hats off to Phillip Rivers, man, uh, making the key passes when need be. Yeah, he's really come a long way. He's become a hot quarterback because last season he was just throwing it up. But a big reason is because he didn't have protection. Right. It uh, seemed like yesterday he was getting that time to throw that football downfield. Again, you know, it was quick passes. Um, and then when he needed to step up in a pocket, he could. Um, it, it was tough. It was tough. It was tough for us. Uh, but I think, you know, after we study the tape and we get more technically sound, we'll, we'll be more efficient when we need to be. Right on. And uh, as the season progresses, what do you think about this Cowboy football team, the defense? Do you think it might get better as we go down the road? Uh, I think the main thing is we have to stay singularly focused, have a, have a, has, have a laser-like mentality about our work. Right. You know, we can't get enamored and distracted by, you know, what, what happened in this game, the, the big chunks, the, the yardage that was given up, you know, the, the lack of sacks and, you know, the lack of technique. You know, we have to fix it, understand where we're going, and be men about our work and, uh, and, and, and keep our head forward. 
Well, this week you got the Denver Broncos, so you better keep your head forward because, <laughs> no, you know, right. they got a quarterback named uh, Peyton Manning that's yeah. really lighting up the NFL at this point. Yeah. Uh, has the preparation started yet to try to deal with Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos next week here at AT&T Stadium? Absolutely. It better it better start. <laughs> <laughs> right on. I mean, you know, Peyton, is a, he's a beast, man. You yeah. know, he's, he's been doing it great for, for many years. So you know you gotta you gotta start the film early. You gotta study him, study his his uh, idiosyncrasies and how he likes to play and the style of offense and and, get, and pick up on it quick and hopefully that can uh, pick up to later things later in the week. Monty Kiffin, did you play with him or did he coach you when he was at Tampa? Yeah, um, he got me drafted there in 2004. Uh, so I, I you know I was with him for five seasons. So that's a big reason why you're here because of the experience you bring and playing that Tampa 2 defense. Absolutely. Now, you got this, I hear a lot about this Tampa 2. How much of that did you play yesterday against San Diego? It seemed like you all in a three deep more than the, uh, the two deep type coverage. Yeah, I mean, we like to disguise the package. We don't want teams to know exactly what we're in. You know, whether it's too deep, you know, a roll safety strong, roll safety weak, man to man, or, or, you know, some type of single high. So, you know, we, we try to, you know, just kind of disguise it a little bit. And, um, or check to it or check out of it. It just depends. Now, your, your football career started in Ohio. You played for the Wayne Warriors. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> WW, the Wayne Warriors. Huh? Were you guys pretty effective uh, back in the day in you, high school ball? You digging ball? up a little research on me, Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> I did. Well, uh, we were good. You know, I, went, I transferred there my senior year, and uh, we went to the state uh, championship wow. game, and we lost. Uh, but uh, it was a great team, man. Still got a lot of good friends from that team, and, uh, it was a great experience, and, you know, we were really dominant. You know, we finished, like, 12th in the nation in my senior year, and um, but we should have won. We should have won a state. We didn't, but, you know, we had a good, we had a good time. Well, you, you played high school ball in Ohio, mm -hmm. and then you get recruited by Ohio State. You end up going there. Was it a dream for you to go to Ohio State as a kid growing up in Ohio? It was an absolute dream to go to the Ohio State. The you know? Ohio State, excuse me. <laughs> we was, don't say, I go into Tulsa, we just say Tulsa. <laughs> we ain't the nothing. <laughs> but, no, it was good. It, yeah. was a, it was a great experience I had there. I learned a lot, uh, you know, from being recruited to seeing, you know, just a, the Buckeye family, how strong it is, and understanding, understanding the tradition that they have. And, you know, from, from Cooper getting fired to Trussell coming in and, teaching me how to be a young man um, right. on and off the field and how to handle responsibility. It was, it was a great time for me. Yeah, Cooper uh, used to coach at Tulsa, as a matter of fact. Yeah. That's what Tulsa is, a kind of stepping stone for young coaches to go on to greater opportunities. But at Ohio State, you play in front of crowds of over 100,000 yeah. people. Man, how cool was that as a kid coming out of high school and now playing in front of crowds like that? Uh. At first, it, it was weird, but, you know, in high school, I played in front of big crowds as well. Yeah. You know, you know, we, we were a big-time D1 school. You know, we played in front of 15,000, 20,000 people, oh, 18,000 okay. people. So I was used to the big crowd, but my first time in Ohio Stadium, um, you know, we're playing Fresno State. You know, I still remember it, and I'm running down on kickoff, and I make the opening tackle. And I and just hearing the crowd, and it, it just sent chills down my spine, you know, and I just remember that feeling, and you get you get used to it. You kind of block it out. I mean, you know how it is playing yeah. in front of a big crowd. Well, not at Tulsa. I learned when I got <laughs> with the Cowboys. Our biggest crowd was like 10,000. We used to have tickets. They gave us tickets. We'd try to sell them. You know, <laughs> First of all, we're scalping them. You know, <laughs> Couldn't get that price. Then we had to give them away. <laughs> and people wouldn't even take it. Oh, that's all right. We've got other stuff to do. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you see these uh, big crowds. You see all the TV. You see all the – this conference shifting going on in college sports. There's a lot of money being generated. How do you feel about athletes, student athletes, getting a share of that money? I think they absolutely should. I think it's important that uh, players are, are 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 rewarded for the good works, and um and and that's and, and I think that's that's key to keeping a sustainability. I think it'll be key in recruiting. And uh, one idea that I always thought about was. Um, having some type of scale system, a weighted scale system, and, and you're not allowed to receive money until you're a junior. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're mature enough, you understand, and it also ensures a kid, you know, to stay in the school. Right. You know, but, you know, it's based on your community service. It's based on, you know, how well you perform on and off the field, attendance right. in class, and, and, a, and a leadership you uphold on the team. 
You know, yeah. all those things play a factor. Well, you know, at Tulsa, of course, student athlete as well. But I think at Ohio State, it goes to another level, even at Boston College, right, Mark? Yeah, I mean, Ohio State's a different level than Boston College. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I do believe at some point there has to be some sort of money coming to these NCAA players. It, 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 it's, a, it's a hot issue right now. And, you know, they bring in so much money to these, to, to these programs. There's yeah. people, I mean, they're buying, you know, jerseys. And I don't, I don't believe that everybody has to get the same amount, but it's got to be, it's got to be something kind of like a profit sharing, like you said. And it, if you're, if you're a man, if you're a junior year, I mean, you should put that in some sort of business arrangement. That might yeah. be life after football. Yeah. It, 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 it's a really good idea, and I think it, it's something you should, you should really look into. And like I said, NCAA players have to get paid at some point. There's too much money being brought into these programs. Uh, without a doubt, and they just need their fair share. So you go to Ohio State, you end up getting drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know your dream had to be to play NFL football. How cool was that to be drafted in the fourth round it, by the Buccaneers? It was strange. Uh, you know, growing up, you know, I wanted to just play big-time college football. You know, I wanted to get a scholarship. That was just my dream. You know, and, and then – as, as things start to materialize when I got to college, I realized I had a chance to make it to the NFL. And uh, being drafted for me was, was bittersweet. I always say that um, because I felt I should have got drafted higher. Um, and, but I was very thankful that I did get drafted. Yeah. You know, and, and, it, and it positioned me uh, to play for a great team, uh, learn from great players. You know, I learned from Rondé Barber, Derek Brooks, Sheldon Corals, wow. and, you know, all those great players uh, in Tampa and great coaches, you know. Um, a lot of head coaches came from came from the Tampa two si system, so I was able to learn from those guys and uh, build a great foundation, you know, um, early in my career. Tampa, then on to Pittsburgh. Why that? Were well, you a free agent? That why you had yeah. to move on? Yeah, I, I was a free agent, and I felt like my time was over in Tampa. Um, you know, and I wanted to go to a team that I could win, a team with a a, a quarterback that was good, that have that sustained longevity. And uh, Ben Roethlisberger was there. He already yeah. had won two Super Bowls. The team had great continuity. And I felt like this is where I wanted to be. You know, I wanted to be there. You know, I knew I had a great relationship with Mike Tomlin. He was my secondary coach in Tampa. He helped me, you know, he helped wow. me get drafted. Yeah. You know, a crazy story about Mike Tomlin. He came into my pro day. He had all this scruffy beard, this, this right. dirty old Tampa Bay hat. And he just come up. I don't know who the guy is. He right. come up and walk up to me like, hey, man, hey, 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 listen, listen. Yeah. All these guys don't know who you are. I know you are. I've been watching your tape. You can play nickel. You can play safety. We're going to need We're going to need you. We're going to need you. I'm yeah. like, and who are you? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know who the guy is. Right, right. And he Didn't just look like, like a coach. He's like, I'm huh? telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. All these guys going to sleep on you. But I'm telling you, we're going to get you in the third or fourth round. We're going to get you in the third or fourth round. Wow. I'm letting you know right now. Wow. I said, oh, okay. So, you know, he, had, he was high on me then, and, you know, he still believes in me, and uh, we're great friends to this day. Yeah, he was a prophet. So that's why, because he knew you yeah. from his Tampa days. When he got now head coach at Pittsburgh, he's going to bring you in, kind of yeah. like what Monty Kiffin did with Dallas. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, so it all worked out for you. He's working out pretty good. Do you enjoy being here oh, in yeah. Texas? We oh, yeah. finally got, after being in Ohio, Hall at in Ohio and Tampa and – Pittsburgh, you finally got to paradise huh? in Texas. Why did it take you so long to get here, man? I don't know, man. Everything happens in its timing, I guess. But yeah. it's, it's great. It's great to be in Dallas. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Right on. Well, we appreciate you being here with us tonight and continued success during the season. And I always say to current NFL players while you're playing the game, you know, knock on wood and stay healthy, bro. Absolutely. All right, go Thanks. Cowboys. Let's give it up for Will Allen, our special guest. Along with my co-host, uh, Mark Colombo, and the Drew Pearson Show will continue right after this at Henry's Tavern. All right, here we are back in the kitchen once again at Henry's Tavern in Plano, Texas, with the one and only Chef David How we doing, and guys? Jen <laughs> with the plastic gloves that scare me a little bit. Now, <laughs> what we're going to do is make the best pizza. In fact, I've started making uh, extra a pizza cheese. here, an extra cheese pizza which is actually not what we're making. I just started, I couldn't help myself. And maybe it's got really excited, it's okay. The pizzeria. So we're gonna move this aside and we're gonna make the margarita pizza. Is that right? That's right, we're gonna make our margarita. It's a, it's a nice little spin on a traditional pizza. Oh, so, hey! Very nice. In case anybody didn't know, the margarita pizza is actually named after uh, the queen uh, Margarita who visited Naples uh, in Italy. 
A pizza maker was just fascinated, and in order to impress her, he made a pizza in the color of the Italian flag, red, white, and green. Of course right. it is. Of course That's it is. what we're going to do. So what we do is we start with our homemade pizza sauce. This guy. This That's guy. Right. <laughs> start in the middle, kind of work your way outside, and then I'm going to give you a spatula to spread it around. Try and spread get, it all we, the way we to get the edges. Tools. I like Do you like me to make tools. one as well? Go for it. Watch this. Let's see who has the best pizza here. Um, me. It's going to be her. But I'm going to make one Let's anyway, just because I'm a ridiculous tripping. person. Ooh, look at I this. I need more sauce, because I like extra no, sauce. You just want to spread it all the oh, way out to the sides. That? You gotta know. You get too much sauce, it's a real thin crust. Really? It's gonna get a little soggy. Oh, you're right, you're right. You're See, right. he's already got too much. He's done. He's dead oh, in the water. Watch See, this. I oh. win. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, bro. Oh, she just called me bro. <laughs> All right. I'm out on this one. Look at that. Look, mine's very, pretty. very nice. All right. All right, cool. Look, what is that? This you need is, to spread it out. This is go. beautiful. Watch this. Use your hands. It's like a pain. Very special, special thing. <laughs> Right. You, need to, you need to cook for your girlfriend. She'd be very impressed. I have no girlfriends. That's probably why she's not impressed. <laughs> Florida, Florida <laughs> right. or hey. All right, so Jen, here what we got. And this is why I'm not a chef, and this is why I'm not married. Look at that. All right. As the so worst starts. I would eat it. It's, I would eat it. Okay. You're fine. All right, this is our handful of mozzarella. We pull it here in-house. You're going to take about five or six slices around the outside and one more in the middle. All right. May I get it's a snack, with, sir? It's hard with gloves. Yes, it's a little difficult. It's very delicate, but a, delicious. But I got my nails done, so. That's why I give you the extra large gloves to cover the nails. Can I get a sack of? No, no, you're cut off. No, you're there you go. I'm cut off. Watch this. You're overusing the sauces, myself. sir. I'm gonna overuse the sauce. I'm gonna overuse the cheese, and nice. it'll be glorious. That's a double whammy. That's beautiful, right there. Look, see how pretty. Thank you. I'm getting compliments and stuff. What's going on? Look at this. Uh oh. You should have made a smiley face. I've, I've run out of options. <laughs> well, all right, here you go. One, two. Okay, well not, hold on. Hold on. Let me just help you. Wow. Look. See, she's the professional yeah. pizza she maker. She is the professional. Four. All right. All right, we're Good. ready to load them up? Yes. All right, cool. We're going to take this. Well, that's it. I'm sad that's about it. my we're, pizza. We got to finish in that's the so oven. No basil? Even I could do we put, this. We put the basil on the end. If you put it in the beginning, it's going to burn. It makes it crunchy. Good, good call. Good call. Good call. Good call. All right, here we go. We're gonna put these pizzas in the oven and see which one turns out best. I predict hers, but I'll throw There's mine. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. So watch this. Here we go. Nice. nice. Woo! Look at that. All right, next. Right next to it. Hey. Hey, she got it. One more shot. Nice job. All right, so Paul's run away because his pizza wasn't nearly as beautiful it's as Jen's. It's fine. Yeah. Case in point. Oh, Paul's pizza. It's sloppy, but you know what? It'll probably taste okay. It's Jen's pizza is amazing and it looks, looks like she's been making it for years. Look at that. Boom. Nice. We could just throw it away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. <laughs> you know, I, I think I didn't do such a bad job, but that is a prettier pizza, I will have to say. My job at Henry's Tavern will have to wait. And that's it for this week back in the kitchen at Henry's Tavern. Let's go devour some pizzas. What do you say? Let's do it. Sounds good. And we're back on the Drew Pearson Show. This week I got to talk to arguably one of the biggest pop stars in the world, Justin Timberlake. He's my man crush. I, I love him. Oh, are you going to go see him? He's actually coming to the American Airlines Center in December. Of course. Yeah, well, you can see him on the big screen this Friday in the film Runner Runner. With Ben Affleck. He's also very steamy. That's right. Batfleck. He's our new Batman. And I think you're really going to like this movie. It really, really is a good showcase for Justin. And Ben, of course, is always amazing. And the film is really, really good. I think you're going to enjoy it. And I got to go to the world premiere in Las Vegas. Had a great time. And the next morning, we were bleary-eyed, but we did the interview. And here's what it looked like. Let's take a look. You have a real gift. I want you to make this place proud. But gambling is forbidden on campus. I owe 60 grand tuition due next week. And that's if I don't eat. Change your tune, or you won't have a school to pay for. Is your plan to gamble for your tuition money? It must be really nice to have your education paid for. I've been three tabling. Statistically, it's the right play. <laughs> this is the one you wait for. Well, congratulations on the film. We're very excited. This is a great showcase for you and an interesting character. Is that those kind of two of the things you look for when 
drawn to a film? Yeah, thanks, man. I've never, well, I think you're drawn to each film for maybe a slightly different reason because you want to explore something you haven't done yet. And with this one, I haven't kind of gotten to play a, a, a role like this, quite like this yet. Um, and also working with working with the cast and, and, and as the cast and crew started to come together, it just felt like this was going to be fun, a fun ride, this movie, you know. Um, some action, um, you know, uh, it's, it's intelligent, it's sexy, it's, it's fast paced. I've never been in a movie quite like this, so it was a lot of fun to make. Yeah. In the film you say everyone's a gambler. How do you, how do you suppose you're a gambler? I try to take well calculated risks. Yeah. Um, but each time, you know, you want to try to you want to try to do something. Or you want to try to pick up a, a project, uh, whether it be music or film, that is a little scary to you. You know, slight, slightly uncharted territory. And and so I guess in that way, everything's a, a, a bit of a gamble. Yeah. Well, in the same sense, the show's the Drew Pearson show, and Drew famously caught the hail mary catch, and mm -hmm. and everyone has a hail mary moment in their life. What do you suppose that was for you? I don't know. I, I... I don't know if I've had a full Hail Mary moment. I try to, I try to, you know, put together a bunch of, a series of first downs. <laughs> try to think of myself as more, if I had to compare myself to an athlete in the way that I think, I would lean more towards somebody like uh, Peyton Manning, yeah. who's, you know, tries to see, see it from different angles and, and, um, and uh, troubleshoot a little bit more, you know. Um, uh, you know, a bunch of two-minute drills yeah. versus one big, uh, one big defining moment. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I haven't. Maybe maybe my hell Mary is yet to come. Yeah. Well, so you can sing, you can dance, you can act, you can produce, you can do all kinds of things for for the for the rest of us guys. What can you not do well? Uh, you know, I'm not a great poker player. Funny enough. Uh, that was a bit of acting in this movie. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a great poker player. Um, Probably because I, 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 I'm not very patient. I lack the patience to sit through and, and uh, you know. The, the, I think the best poker players are guys that are really patient and even more methodical than I, I could be. Yeah. And uh, your show, you've got a big tour coming up and your show's hitting some of our markets, including Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, so what can we expect from the, the show? Uh, well, we're st I'm still kind of putting the set list together, but you know, it's going to be a visual. Um, visually, it's going to be um, you know like kind of something you've never quite seen before. Yeah. We're doing some uh, some interesting stuff with technology uh, in the show. I don't want to give too much away. It's hard to yeah. describe it, but you know, visually, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, good. Congratulations. Everything seems to be going great for you. Thanks, man. I'm I'm trying. <laughs> That's all you can do, right? Yeah. That looks so great. Justin did amazing. Yeah, he really is. And you know what? He's a stylish, good-looking man. So I was, I was trying to dress up, but you know, I can't quite pull off the hat or the, the shirt the way he did. Not many can. He's pretty stylish. He's got his own look. That's true. Well, so do you. You know. Thank you. I feel bad. I actually haven't been able to introduce properly my new co-host, Jennifer Reed. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Absolutely. We're happy to have you on the show. And Thank you. Where have we seen you before? I've done a lot of Dallas modeling. Um, I've uh, been around for uh, like four years, and I've been making my mark, and I'm excited to be a part of the show. Good. This girl knows how to strike a pose. You've got a very Marilyn Monroe-esque thing. That's I my I'm favorite. Gonna, I'm That's... not even going to attempt to... to uh, you want, you don't want to pose? This. Yeah. Let's see a pose. Ready for this? Just... See that? No, my, my favorite thing to uh, do in photo shoots is the 40s, 50s style looks. It's very classic, very beautiful. It's kind of my thing, so Good. I enjoy that. Well, where can we see some of these photos? All over. I went to New York Fashion Week. I was in a, a runway show in, in Dallas. I mean, I have a website, so I mean, it's kind of a, I just kind of do it here and there, so. Well, what's your website? It's jenreed.com, two ends. Perfect. Well, we're looking forward to having you more on The Drew Pearson Show. Thank you. Back to you, Drew. Hi, this is Paul Southman for The Drew Pearson Show, and I'm here at Henry's Tavern in Plano, Texas, and I just pulled up in the 2013 SRT Charger 392 Edition. Let's take a look at this beautiful exterior. There's a hemi orange pearl coat with pitch black painted hood, mirrors, roof, and spoiler, all hemi orange pearl. 
6.4 liter Hemi V8 with a five speed automatic transmission. There's a five function HID projector, SRT headlamps. Look at this, dual bright exhaust tips and 20 inch black vapor chrome aluminum wheel wrapped in Goodyear Z-rated performance tires. Now let's take a look at the interior. We've got heated black performance perforated leather seats and heated back seats and leather wrapped heated SRT steering wheel with power tilt, telescoping control, audio controls and paddle shifters. And I love this feature, the Uconnect 8.4 in with Garmin navigation, a backup camera, one year free Sirius satellite radio, voice recognition, Bluetooth streaming audio and SRT performance pages. Another great thing is the driver convenience package which includes the blind spot monitoring and cross path detection, rain sensitive windshield wipers, and automatic high beam headlamp control. There's performance tuned steering, 470 horsepower and 470 pounds foot of torque. And that's it, the 2013 SRT Charger 392 edition. Where can you get it? Dodge City of McKinney, dodgecitymckinney.net. All right, welcome back to the Drew Pearson Show. As we've been going on all night, my social media director, I'd like to welcome him, Michael Nash, to the set. And while we were doing all these interviews and all this going on right here at Henry's Tavern, Michael was over there getting taking all your questions via Facebook and Twitter. And now he has the best questions to present to me as part of the segment called Just Ask Drew. Michael, how's things been going tonight? Good, good. Uh, last week we had Just Ask Mark. So Okay. Did he so get any he, questions? Yes, he oh, got all. Oh, geez. I bet he got a lot since I've been gone, huh? Uh, That's why we had to get Mark out of here, man. He's about to take over. But what yeah, do you got for me, Michael? We've been getting a ton of questions on Twitter and Facebook. Sorry we can't get to everybody, but we'll start off with uh, Chris Dunnington. At 2-2, two and two, is Romo a $100 million quarterback? Uh, $100 million? That's a lot of money. I don't know if anybody's a $100 million quarterback, even a Peyton Manning, because that's so much money. But that's the going price for a quarterback of Romo's stature and what he means to the Dallas Cowboys. So there's no one else out there, so we got to pay him that kind of money to keep him in the fold. And now he just has to live up to that high dollar salary that he currently has. Uh, TJ Rules asks, uh, would you say the key to beating the Broncos, run the ball and keep Peyton off the field? That's a good strategy. Who said that? Nice. Uh, TJ Rules on he, Twitter. Yeah, he must be an offensive coordinator, maybe a defensive coordinator, the way he's talking. Because that's a great point because one of the ways to slow Peyton Manning down in that offense is to keep him off the field. And if we can get a sustained drives, some sustained drives going throughout that football game, what I mean by that, 10, 12, 15, 16 play drives, that'll eat up the clock and gives him less opportunities to take the field and do his thing. You know, he likes to throw the ball maybe 40, 50 times a game, but still everybody gets infatuated with that with the Denver Broncos. But they have a very good offensive line, and they've always been known for running the football. So they still have a very good running game that we have to honor. So the more or the less time we have Peyton Manning on that field, the better for the Cowboys' chances to win that game. I agree totally. Uh, playmaker CZP9 on Twitter ask another 8-8 eight eight season, is Jerry going to do the right thing and fire Garrett? And who'd be up next? Uh, Drew Pearson. <laughs> I could take Tom Landry's playbook right now, dust it off, and implement that offensive system in today's NFL. That's how cool Landry was. But I think Garrett is under some pressure. But you know what, Michael? With, through all this 2-2 two and two to thus far with the Cowboys, there's not been any criticism of Jason Garrett. The criticism has been of the offensive coordinator, Callahan, about balance with the offense. The criticism has about Monty Kiffin and the defense giving up those big plays and the points that they've given up to this point. So Jason Garrett's kind of just, you know, just back in the background right now, not get, getting any of that criticism. All of that has been laid on his offensive coordinators. But that doesn't mean if they go 8-8, eight and eight, his job will be safe. And I think Jerry will have to make some decisions because three consecutive seasons of 8-8, eight and eight, that ain't cutting it. That right. ain't cutting it, Michael. Uh, one last question here is uh, why did the Cal uh, – I'm sorry – 
Billy Biven on Twitter asked, why did the Cowboys go with five wideouts, no back, on third and short, and basically telegraphing they're going to pass? That's a good question, Knight. I wish I had the answer for that because, you know, you're not going to get any uh, expectations that you're going to run the football in that situation. So the Cowboys need to shore that up. I th really think the Cowboys need to go out and find a fullback. Because if you want to lead DeMarco Murray in there, in th especially 31-type situations, the tight end can't do that because he's not used to doing that. If you put a fullback in there, a la the Moose, Daryl Johnson, then you're going to lead that back through the hole and have a better chance of picking up those first downs or be even a better chance of having your running game have some success. Awesome. Uh, there is one question that was great today. Uh, Wayne in Texas asked, is there any chance Peyton will miss the plane <laughs> to Dallas? <laughs> well, we could work something out. We could make him a uh, hostage or something, <laughs> kidnap him before he drives to the airport. But I don't think so. You know, Peyton Manning, you know, he's a student at the game. I did some uh, conversation earlier today with Roger Staubach, and the thing he talked about more than anything was about Peyton's ability to prepare, you know. That's what makes him a great quarterback is preparation. And he, by the time the game starts, he knows everything about that opponent's defense, and uh, that's why he's so effective out there. So that, that might be the best way to stop Peyton Manning come this Sunday for the Dallas Cowboys is to have him miss that flight. But I don't think that's going to happen. That it for tonight? That, that wraps up our questions for Just Ask Drew. Remember, tweet and Facebook your questions to Drew every Monday, and we'll let, answer them live here on the air on YouTube Live, and they also will be on the final show cut on Fox Sports Southwest. Follow Drew Pearson on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. All right.